Hi friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Fiona and I'm a full-time artist. And on this channel, I like to take you with me on my artistic journey, whether that means working on projects here in my studio, going out to see art exhibits, buying art supplies and sharing my haul with you, basically any art related content. So if that sounds like something you're into, please like and subscribe. It's one free click for you, but makes a big, big difference for my channel. All right, friends, I have a fun video for you today. I did what's called a yard sale, which is a play on yard sale, where essentially it's an outdoor art market, flea market style, where we're able to sort of do a summer clean out of our studio of seconds, maybe slightly damaged goods offered at a really discounted rate. So this was held at the local arts council here in town and it was a lot of fun. So we're going to get into it and then I'll give you a little bit of a recap after. Good morning, friends. So I am going to start getting prepared for the yard sale. We're two weeks away and there's a lot that needs to be done in terms of organizing things. Since it's going to be sort of like a flea market style, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on things, but like, you know, getting things kind of organized. Oh, Zelda's here. Hi. So anyway, we're going to go downstairs. I've just been kind of taking things down there and throwing it, you know, in a pile. So I'm just going to kind of move things around. The other thing that's going to have to happen is I'm going to have to fold up these tables, but since I'm currently still using them, I'll probably wait till like, the day before the fair to do that. The fair, oh my gosh. See, I'm so used to doing fairs. The market, the flea market. Um, I'll wait to do that. So anyway, let's, let's go downstairs and get ourselves organized. All right, so one of the first things mom's been doing has been putting little succulents into some of my ceramics that I've thrown. So like super cute. But, you know, I think they can go for a deal. The other thing she did was we had some leftover ornaments that were like maybe like damaged for some reason that didn't sell. So she's put some ribbon on those, um, a pair of earrings. So yeah, just see if anybody wants them. And then I picked up this sort of dish rack and I have just like random loose drawings. So I'm gonna put them in here. I've shown them like this at other art fair and stuff, but to not much success. So hopefully some people at the market might want some smaller drawings. And then I have some framed works that I'll probably do some deals on. And this is gonna be like our bargain bin here of um, things that were maybe damaged or you know some of my earlier stuff that I've thrown and I don't know like probably like a five dollar bin and then this is some stuff that's a bit nicer so they'll be a little bit more expensive but still a good deal I have to go through this portfolio and bring up one of my browsers and then these are just bags. So if anybody buys stuff, we can throw it in there. Sorry, Maria, we're reusing your bag. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll put my business card over that. But yeah, you know, repurposing bags in case people buy things. I also have some smaller paintings and some smaller frame drawings there too. So yeah, we have quite a good little collection here, but yeah, what I need to start doing is basically going through everything and updating the labels on the back in terms of the pricing since it is going to be specifically for sales and deals.
my gosh. Look at this drawing. This was a spiral galaxy. When's this from? The sombrero one? No, the sombrero one sold. This is uh -huh. a spiral galaxy. This is from this 2014. Beautiful. 2014! <laughs> oh, I love that. Okay. I need to start making piles here. <coughs> Ooh, dusty. Some glasses on. Anything else is in here. Oh yeah. Part of my Urban Neon series, also 2014. Event Horizon, 2016. This is like what I used to do, guys. Like just detailed stuff. Let's look. That's all I would do on a sheet of paper like that. That was like my bread and butter. Mountains and a, and a moon. Bubble Nebula, 2014. Another one that's not signed. Some angry drawing. Can you see that? Enough is enough. Okay unsigned one. I remember this was actually when I was doing that ice cream packaging project and I was playing the different shapes and then this was like a sketch where it's like the packaging you know goes around and this is like where they had type going. Here's one that I totally didn't finish. This was like the 100 day project but this looks like Ones that didn't get framed. Oh no! This was a, a sketch for a commission. Somebody wanted three of these guys, but they wanted them on a larger scale. And they wanted blue. And more sketches. This was actually the first mural I ever did, and I did it for the art fair, and it was for sustainability. I had a leaf motif one. They ended up just using my mark making and putting type over it, but. It's fun to see. <laughs> this ended out being printed on totes and t-shirts. Can't stop, won't stop. I still like that. I should bring that back. Would you guys want to see prints of this? Just my regular shape. 2014. 2009. That's nice. My triumph is over you. Damaged. It doesn't even have a signature. Oh, I remember I did this, I think it was for my friend's art magazine, where it was like design advice. So once again, playing with pattern and type. So the advice was, it needs to work on two levels and when in doubt, add contrast. Pretty good advice from 2017. Okay, so I have just little Tiny, tiny, it's so tiny that it's not even gonna focus. But anyway, little itty bitty drawings. They were like part of like some hundred day projects I did, just little cutouts. But anyway, what I'm thinking is that I'm just gonna have like a tiny box of these and a QR code that says, follow me on social media and then you can take one for free. See if that gets me some followers or actually maybe I'll have people sign up for my newsletter because when it comes to social media, it's very fleeting. People that are signed up for your newsletter, that's like getting in, you know, the inbox that there's intimacy in being on somebody's newsletter and they get to be on your, uh, in your inbox. So. Maybe that'll be a newsletter sign up. I haven't really promoted my newsletter um, publicly recently. So maybe I'll be like, if you follow it, take a freebie, you know? Or I could, I could offer both options. Be like, follow me on social and you get to take one. Maybe I'll have two boxes, one for colors, one for black and white. Be like, just have a sign up list. Here's a bunch more. Yeah. That's gonna be, I just have to find a little bowl or something to put these in. Hi friends, just a little prep update from the yard sale. Um, everything here is good to go. I made myself some signage. 
So this might be a hint for anybody that's doing uh, vending. So a scan to pay, so QR codes for Venmo and PayPal, and then also accepted cash, credit, and Apple Pay, because I'll have my square reader. And then I have my social media on the bottom of that. And then I'm gonna have like a little box of freebies. So freebies for follows. So if people give me a follow on social or my newsletter, they'll get one of those. And it's just like little sticker size drawings. But the most interesting thing that has happened today is I posted a reel, which I'll put here, talking about the art sale and, you know, showing the little succulents, which are really, really cute, the succulent pots, and people have loved them. So here is now what is left of that assortment. This is what's left. So the two largest have sold and two of the smaller have sold. Um, hopefully there'll be some left for the yard sale itself. Um, but yeah, you know, just a lesson in uh, how you present something. And I say that because I have shown these before. They've been on my website, not all of them, but some of them. And there's been like no interest in them. I've had them at other art fair, no interest in them. Um, but now that they've been photographed with little succulents in it, I think people are like, oh, I can totally use it for that. So anyway, just a lesson to me. But anyway, everything is good and ready to go now. Um, so I'm just gonna see you guys on the day of. See you there. Good morning, friends. Mom and I are currently on our way over to the yard sale. We packed the car yesterday, as you can see. And yeah, we're ready to have some fun today. Let's go. Delta, mommy was out there working hard to give you a luxurious lifestyle. <laughs> Good morning, friends. Just in here in the studio on a rainy day, we'll put the lights on, it's a bit dreary. Let there be light. Um, yeah, back from the yard sale from yesterday and I have some thoughts on it I'm gonna share with you. But first, 
I need to get my tables set up again since I took the folding tables out for the event. So let me set up my studio and then we'll have a little chat. You know, I drank five of these while I was out there. It was so warm. But anyway, <laughs> um, we are back in this studio. Everything is back in its place. And you might be getting a sneak peek right now because I think this video comes out before my studio makeover. But if that's something that you're interested in seeing, me transforming this space, you can look forward to that. I think probably next week or at least in the coming week. So stay tuned. All right, thoughts and feelings. First of all, I want to state that this was my first outdoor market in... I don't know, many, many years before I was even a full-time artist. I wasn't doing ceramics. I wasn't doing painting. I was very focused on works on paper. And I remember displaying them at that market and people thought it was a bit out of place compared to the rest of the things at the time. So I think it almost put a bit of a damper on me for doing outdoor markets. And I sort of shifted my focus to doing indoor art fairs, but it was really fun to do this, get a perspective on it and see how people feel about my work now. With that said, this was very specifically meant to be flea market style. We weren't allowed to bring tents. It was meant to be a very simple setup. We were meant to have like fold out tables and kind of everything laid out or in boxes. The intent was to sell seconds, slightly damaged goods at a discounted rate, get to clear out your studio for the summer. But the impression that they gave the artists was this is meant to be a very flea market style event. So with that said, the people that came to the market were really looking for deals. I practically sold out of the 10 and under box and nobody really took a look at like my $50 ceramics, for instance. So if I were to do it again, I would probably try to focus more on like a lower price point tier. It was good to have some things, like I sold some things that were 60, but it was um, canvases or works on paper. Um, the ceramics, I think, are a little bit of a harder sell at that price point, considering there were a lot of other ceramicists there and they were all offering things at a great price. I feel warranted in offering the prices that I do, given that I spend literally hours hand glazing each piece. It's not like I'm dipping the glaze. Not to say that there's anything wrong with that at all. I totally appreciate artists that do that. But just for me personally in my business, I feel sort of that handcrafted effort I put into it warrants a little bit of a higher price point when it comes to some of the larger works. The other thing I want to say is that people were looking for deals, obviously. But with that said, I don't think it was really known that a lot of the works there were maybe seconds or slightly damaged because... Sometimes people would look at something that's like a $20 ceramic that had a crack in the bottom. And they'd be like, oh, there's a crack. And then I would have to explain that, yeah, this is a vent is for like sort of seconds or slightly damaged goods. So that's kind of the point to clear out that stuff out of the studio. So I don't think the audience in general understood that. I think they just thought that they were getting like really good deals on perfect artwork. So if I were to do it again, I would probably have better signage explaining that. Like maybe I would have like a very low tier for like things that had larger cracks in it or maybe like a chip off of a frame or something like that. And then, you know, maybe it would go up in price if it was like maybe just a small hairline fracture. The thing was, I would say to people, all the works that were there were completely functional in terms of the ceramics. Like you could put water in it, all of that, despite whatever damage there was to it, um, or like bubbling on the glaze and things like that. 
but I think just having to like explain that continuously to people it wasn't really understood that the things on display were discounted because they were damaged and that worries me a little bit as an artist because I don't want people to think that you're offering something of high value at that steep of a discount um it's like it's being offered at that because it's damaged so just something for me to sort of mull over and think about Something else for me that I reflected on was that I had some smaller pieces that are square and I had them sort of in like a dish rack that I've had. This is now maybe like my fourth or fifth time displaying those pieces in that style and none of them sold. So this is sort of good for me to think about that maybe it's the work or how it's displayed but people seem to be more into purchasing things that were maybe at a higher price point that are framed, especially for works on paper. They just want something ready to go that they could hang on their wall. So if I were to do this again, overall, I would bring less stuff, but I would have it more display ready. So like if I had just old frames lying around, like throw stuff into that and have that out as opposed to like a lot of the loose stuff, like people would, they love a rummage, they love going through it but they weren't as inclined to buy it because it's not sort of wall ready. I think overall I didn't need to bring as much stuff, but I would probably do more bins because people really love a rummage when it comes to flea markets. Like people kind of like going through and like finding these little gems. And then I think, especially for the ceramics, I had like a couple of pouches I had painted, like canvas pouches. People really liked holding them. And I think once people hold it, it kind of helps make a connection. In terms of accepting sales, a lot of people did cash, so I had that till ready on hand, so that was really good. A few people paid by card, and with the card, I actually had to accept offline payments, which is a little scary, but the Wi-Fi wasn't so good in the area, so maybe next time I would get a hotspot or something to connect better, but all the payments went through, so it was fine ultimately, uh, but that was scary for a minute. That was like, oh, if this is an offline payment, is it actually going through? But everything seemed to work fine. And then a lot of people use the Venmo and the PayPal QR codes. So that was good. And I'm really glad I brought that signage. So something about the sales is that my square reader isn't attached to my website. So now I have to make the effort to go in and sort of remove things from my website which is something good to consider if I were to do like a future outdoor market. This isn't something I think about a lot because at other art fair, I'll sort of update my website after the fair typically. So I don't have that problem, but something to think about if I'm doing more market style things to try and link that to my online inventory. And it saves me a step of having to remove it afterwards. With all of that said about the pieces, if there's anything you're interested in, it's always linked in the shop below. I will say, it was so helpful to have my mom there. She did an amazing job helping out with packing things as people bought them. And then just like helping me set up and loading the car and unloading it. It's just so incredibly helpful. And I'm so grateful to her for her help. She did an amazing job. And since we collaborate on the ceramic, she throws the vessels and I glaze them. It was just really nice for people to see us both there and get to talk to us both about our processes. And last thought, but certainly not least, is so many friends and some subscribers on here showed up to support it. And that just made me so incredibly happy. I really appreciate it when you guys come out and I get to meet you and chat to you and to my friends coming by and just having a little chat. It's just a little bit of a pick me up during a long day, but thank you very, very much. Um, for making the effort to come out and support an in-person event. And it really means a lot, it does. So obviously a lot of things for me to consider if I'm gonna be doing another market. Again, I think I learned a lot. Doing an outdoor market is just so incredibly different from doing these indoor art fair events. It's a whole different beast, but I'm really happy to have tried it out and have those learnings. And I think I'll continue to reflect more, but for now, I'm going to rest a little bit and I'll see you guys in the next video. So till then, stay well and stay inspired, my friends. Bye.